Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Today, we're talking about all important, why you should never forget your towel. Maybe one of the most important things in the bag at the gig is the towel. I learned this over many, many years of not bringing a towel and having all kinds of situations where I really, really wish that I had one. They've grown over the years. We definitely could think of a whole lot of them and we narrowed it down to our six or maybe five and a half, depending on how you look at it today. Favorite uses for a towel on the gig. It's the unsung hero. <laughs> it will save you sometimes. In all seriousness, though, when it comes to things that we bring to the gig every time, the more of a Swiss Army knife kind of tool we have, the more important it's going to be all of the time. Obviously, we're not talking about wiping our faces with towels today. What we're actually talking about is situations that are going to save you on the gig and that are also maybe things you haven't thought of that are going to alleviate problems that you might not even know that you're having. All right, we're gonna start at the shallow end of the pool with maybe the more obvious things that maybe you still haven't thought of yet. And that starts with using a towel for muffling on the snare drum. Now here's the thing, we use bandanas for this a lot and bandanas have a certain amount of weight and a certain amount of surface area. If we're talking about really getting the deadest possible sound out of a snare drum while also being able to use it, particularly in live situations where we wanna to switch to a thuddy electronic sound, there's really no substitute for a towel because it's gonna literally get rid of everything except for the the low fatness and the sound of the wires from underneath. Bearing in mind that with this much, we're gonna to wanna to hit it either with the butt of the stick or pretty hard to help it compete with the hi-hats. Incidentally, in these examples, we are also putting a bandana inside of the hi-hats, which is a little bit of a twofer thing that we like to do here to sort of balance out the dead muffling on the snare with a little bit of deadness in the hi-hats too to sort of like bring the family together and make it make sense. Now this is as much about control as it is about going after a certain tone. There are situations, particularly in rooms with a lot of stone or a lot of glass or maybe really high ceilings, situations where reflections are an issue and that turns into volume being an issue, where getting rid of high end, getting rid of sustain, and getting rid of overtones in general just makes everything easier while also giving us an alternative character for the drum that's more dramatic than a wallet or a bandana, something like that. Now example number two is actually one that Ben showed me today which had not occurred to me and that is in situations where you wanna protect your rack tom from your snare drum physically or you wanna protect the bass drum from the edge of the rack tom in situations where you're either using maybe a kit that is you know, needing to have things really close together because of the space that you're in or maybe it's a new kit, lots and lots of reasons. But ultimately what we're talking about here is rash on the finish or noise from the drums literally hitting into each other. So what we're doing here is just using the pressure of the setup by setting them closely together to wedge a towel in between them so that we don't have to worry about any damage occurring between the drums and also no possibility of extra noises from them colliding when we're really getting into it. This is 100% from a practical side of things. This isn't a tone thing or a sound thing. In fact, we went out of our way to make sure that it's not changing the sound of the drums in any way at all. This is more just, again, about making sure we're not getting any ancillary noise from the drums hitting each other and also not damaging the finish of these drums that we like so much. On to door number three. This is going on the floor tom, but for a couple of reasons that you wouldn't necessarily expect. The first thing that we're doing here is something that we did back in orchestra basically, but we would do it on either an auxiliary drum or maybe on a music stand, which is using a towel to both stabilize our extra implements and percussion and things so that they don't roll around, and also so that during quiet parts of a piece we're not making noise, picking up and setting down the implements that we have to use over the course of something where maybe we have to move from mallets to sticks to a tambourine, things like that.
Situations where this becomes really, really useful include pit orchestra situations, singer-songwriter situations where the volume threshold is super low, and also just any other situation where you want to switch in the middle of a tune, maybe just from brushes to sticks, and you want to make sure that there's not going to be any noise. Now, this could be a situation where you do utilize a music stand for it. It could be, you know, on your secondary snare drum that you don't use that much. But since it's just a towel, it's something that you can just do for one song and then take off, which again is part of the convenience of using this towel as a tool and not just a thing to dry off with. Now something that we also run into in recording studios and here in this very recording studio is sympathetic resonance between drums on the kit. Our prime offender on this very drum set is the floor tom. When the floor tom is sounding amazing in the mics, it is very lively when the bass drum is being hit. Almost to the point where when we're doing quieter demos, like with the towel on the snare earlier, for instance, it's as loud as everything else. But we're loving the sound of the floor tom, so what are we to do if we have a situation where we don't want to hear all that? Putting a towel on top suppresses that vibration so much that even with tambourines and all of this wood and metal and stuff on there, that stuff isn't even making any sound. And if a tambourine isn't vibrating and making an audible sound, you can guarantee that it's not going to make any other sound out of that drum that's going to cloud everything and mess up your mix. This is another prime situation for pit orchestra situations where maybe you're tooling along and you suddenly have to play the tambourine for, you know, eight bars and then put it down really quick, get back to oompa or whatever it is. This will save you from clacky sounds, noisy sounds, and also sympathetic vibration when you're doing the rest of what you're doing. Next up, variation on the previous theme, ways to integrate metallic, wood, other kinds of percussions that you're gonna strike with a stick by just setting them on a folded up towel on your floor tom. This doubles for pit orchestra and other situations like that, like we were talking about earlier, where maybe we need to quell that tom a little bit, we need to get it out of the way, but also we need to be able to get the full sound out of the percussion that we're hitting. And if we just set it on the drum for a second in the middle of the song, it's rolling around, it's making a lot of noise on the head, the vibrations are going crazy. So with a little bit of sort of manipulation of the towel, we can make a little bed for something like a cowbell or a wood block, different things like that, that we can utilize just for a section of a song and even pull it off in the middle of the song and set it on the floor if we want to get back to using the floor tom again. This is something that I do all the time. I like to use pieces of scrap metal sometimes in just, you know, sort of vaudeville sounds and Tom Waitsy kind of stuff. And it's not practical to have it actually be integrated into the kit if it's only on one tune. But on the other hand, especially if you used it on the record, it might be integral to that performance and people are gonna miss it if it's not there. This is the quickest, safest, easiest way to just get it in there for the moment and then get it out. Last and definitely not least, this is something that I actually learned from watching big bands on stage, like rock bands and stuff like that when I was little, and I wondered why they were doing this, and then when I grew up, I figured it out. Probably not able to spot it in that demo, but this is actually on the drum throne. I'm just sitting on it. And the deal with this is, basically, some drum thrones are cloth on the top, some of them are leather or faux leather on the top. You get sweaty <laughs> when you sit on those things. They can get slick, they can get uncomfortable. It's generally just not optimal. Towel on the throne really takes the edge off and also makes sure that you feel secure on there when you're playing a lot of really fast stuff and moving around a lot that you're not sliding around on it. I know it's a little gross, but this is a real thing that a whole lot of people do and I can't stress enough that if you haven't tried it out and that's a thing that frustrates you and you're playing, it's really worth it.
All right, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for staying with us through this towel adventure. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell below so you hear about all of our new videos that are coming up for this season. Please follow the link below to our Patreon as well. See all the extra things that are offered there, extra demos, anecdotes, stories, behind the scenes footage, other series, symbol series. We're gonna do some symbol series today. And lastly, would love to know about what you use a towel for. We did omit using a towel for muffling the bass drum, really because that's kind of the first stop with a towel, at least in my life. I use towels for the bass drum an awful lot. We've talked a lot about that in the past. Don't need to do that again. Having said that, if you've just stumbled on things that have made your life easier, funner, better sounding with a towel, we would love to know.